Hey Ben, uh, just real quick, real quick request. I know you've never probably ever had this, but can you do the interview? How you coach? Can you get rid of these oh. pesky sandals, please? Well, my feet were starting to get cold, so <laughs> we should have sandals in the summer. We got slippers just you... in the winter. Cleveland's terrible in the winter too. I don't know if you guys know that. Awful. Awful. Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, you, you like to coach with, yes. with no, with no. You fight. You're gonna be fighting, no right? Feet, with no shoes on. No also. shoes on, right? Yeah. Natural. Did your fight get moved? I did. I'm March 2nd now. Uh, same same opponent. The whole card got canceled on January 26th, so we had to move. Okay, yeah. so you're, this is your first time with this promotion, UFC. Yep. You were with Bellator, 1FC. Uh -huh. Now you're, you're going to the UFC. Yeah. And, but so far, how has your, your relationship been so far with the UFC? Uh, so far, so good. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I got nothing bad to say. So we're, we're doing good. Okay, I caught up with DC two weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Oh, Iron Man. Iron Man. Uh, yeah. Okay. I didn't. And, and something I pointed out to DC is like Aaron Judge and uh, you know LeBron James. They don't coach youth sports. They don't coach high school sports. Yeah. You're a pro athlete. You yeah. coach sport. Okay? Yeah. Do you think that's indicative of wrestling? Is that you know it's like you and DC are the only guys really doing it right now? It's got to be somebody else, right? Well, okay. Who? Name them. I didn't think about that for a while. So um, I think I might have got yeah, you. I, I'm not sure. You know what? I'm sure that obviously travel schedules of professional baseball or football or basketball are going to be significantly more difficult, right? Whereas fighting, we fight three or four times a year. We have, you know, essentially a bunch of free time to do what we want to do. Um, that being said, I'm sure there's some professionals in other sports that once they retire, they go back into it. I mean, you know, I just had Daniel in for a clinic yesterday right before UFC Milwaukee, and one of the things he said, and I know, I know a lot of. Athletes feel this is like, this was my way out. This is what helped make me who I am. Um, and the least I can do is give a little bit back. And I know Daniel said that. I've heard other professional athletes say that. And that's, you know, that's how I feel about it. I, lo I love what I do. I know wrestling's made me who I am. And so I'm going to try to uh, instill the same qualities that I learned from the sport into others. Okay, so, you know, it's just... Defense Soap Duels, Cleveland, Ohio. There's not a ton glamorous about this event. No. You want your guys to get better, and this is a hammer yeah. event, no question about it. When yeah. you bring the, the kids here to Defense Soap Duels in Cleveland, Ohio, in December, right before yeah. Christmas, what do you want them to get out of it? What do you so want to get out we of just, it? This is the first time we put together one of our parents, Tom Clark, actually helped a lot. He put together um, essentially the same team. We went last week to a tournament in Michigan. We're going this week, and then we're going to do a national duels in a couple weeks in uh, Louisville. So it's the same team through. So, you know, what it was is we have enough good 6th, 7th, and 8th graders that need to go to that next level. Um, I actually hate the fact I try to talk Guy out of having anything under 70 pounds here. I, I don't like national level competitions for that age group. I think they're dumb uh, and worthless. And just threw away with all those weight classes at any national tournament in that age group. So, you know what, we're keeping on to the 6th, 7th, 8th graders, getting them ready to have success. I mean, I think five of our guys on our middle school team right now will probably be wrestling at Fargo. Um, and essentially, you know, that 15-year-old, that's for us, that's kind of the start of their journey towards higher-level success. And so, you know, those kids who are, we want to get them ready for the Fargos and that kind of stuff. And so, 6th and 7th, 8th grade, that's kind of where we start gearing them up a lot. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing here. Okay, so balance in your life, I know it's really difficult. You got a yeah. couple kids. How many kids you got now? Three. three. You got three kids. Yeah. You find out a boy, right? Yeah, the third one's a boy. Yeah. Okay, third one's a boy, third time was a charm for you. You got two daughters and a son, right? Yeah. And, uh, and balance is really hard, right? You're uh, a media personality. Right? Well, yeah, no question. Uh -huh. But, like, you wrestle people more than anybody else in MMA history. More than Mark Coleman, yeah. more than, more than Randleman. And those uh -huh. guys really never evolved into, they had hands. Yeah. I don't know if you've got even the hands that those guys have. You never know. You never seen them. I, I don't want to see them right here, right? But like, you know, you, you watch your fights. Yeah. And you, you know, you're slapping guys sometimes. Yeah. You're early on. You you uh, had yeah. literally no hands. Yeah. No one has ever dominated the wrestling aspect of mm -hmm. MMA like Ben Askren. Yeah. I think you being in three promotions is, is a testament to that. You know, sure. I'm all picking up on yeah. that. But wrestling people. And Dana saying you're boring and yeah. you're just wrestling yeah, was, guys I mean, to death. Dana just needed an excuse for not signing me in 2013, right? And so it was. The two really bad excuses were I don't have enough experience and I'm bored. And those are bad excuses at that. Um, so yeah, obviously I, I realized at a very early age I'm not going to be as good at anything else as I am in wrestling. I've been doing this my whole life. I'm really good at it. And, you know, I picked up on the jiu-jitsu quick because it's not very far off from what I already do in wrestling. So I picked that up lightning quick. And I've incorporated that where it's necessary. I've also, the other thing that people, I don't want to say they don't give me credit for, but 
and realize that I've also taken parts of folk style wrestling that are very efficient for mixed martial arts and put them in, right? Early in my career, um, I was doing jiu-jitsu when I got on the ground, and then I thought, well, this is stupid. I can do a folk style wrestling move that I know like the back of my hand, and it's gonna be just as good as this other move. And so I started employing folk style wrestling tactics on the ground, and it became very efficient, very effective. And so especially if you watch Really, probably Carl Amasu fight on. That was, you know, and I, I jumped. I won the belt 18 months after I started fighting. So to your point, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You, you really didn't. I, did. it's like I have no idea. But so, um, you know, the Amasu fight kind of passed that. Maybe even Douglas Lima a little bit. I'm starting to employ a lot more folk style techniques when I hit the mat. And that became really effective. And so, um, another thing is, you know, I, I, I don't get credit for is I am not a bad stand-up fighter. I just choose not to use offensive stand-up. I use defensive stand-up. I don't get hit, right? I have great defense. So I was lucky enough to go to Rufus Sport, which had a whole bunch of great kickboxers, and they were trying to punch me and kick me and do everything else to me. And so I learned how to have great defense, so they could do that. And I was smart enough to know from an early age, uh, if I don't get hit hard, I'm not going to lose fights. There's no one in the world that's going to control position on me and stop my take on for 15 minutes straight. That's just, it's just impossible. Right? 25, 15, 25, 25 now, right? right? Yeah, well, wherever Hopefully, we're at, right? Yeah. right? That's the goal. Well, I'm at 15 this fight, but sure, yeah, fair enough. Um, so I learned, if I don't get hit, I'm not gonna lose. It's really simple. So I, you know, my stand-up is defensively, pred everything's defensively predicated, and then how do I bridge the gap to get my hands on you and then take you down in the beach road? Okay, so. Yeah. You're, you're, wait, are you 34? 34, I'm 34, 34, yeah. 34, okay. And, you know, you said, I said, hey, you got a guy who's older. You said, I'm old. Yeah. Lawler's old. People older, yeah. Right? But, like, how many more years do you have of this, and how many more years before yeah. coaching I, yeah. is the thing? Well, I mean, I tried to retire once already. Um, so, I actually, when I signed this contract, when I got traded, I actually hired someone else to kind of take my spot at the academy. Now, I'm still there, like, two or three days a week, because I, I love it, and it's what I enjoy doing, and... Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have enough time to do so, but I I knew I wanted to be able to fully focus on my training, and so I hired someone else to run my, you know, he's actually an up-and-coming fighter. He won two um, Division three national titles for wrestling, and he, he wrestled up in high school. So he's running all my classes. Um, I'm in and out, you know, but um, so I can focus on myself now. Okay, so Max, do you and Max still wrestle like every day that you're in each other's presence? Uh, no, we don't really wrestle very much at all anymore. You don't? Who, so who do you train wrestling? Who do you train all your wrestling? Well, I go to the Badger RTC now, so I get to wrestle those guys. So you go, you don't wrestle. Well, you grab like Hilger? Yeah, I wrestle those every week. Are you serious? Yeah, sure. That gets that. I mean, you That's really got to work. Workout. Well, they don't have another heavyweight. And you got to work. So I volunteered for my, oh yeah, my yeah. So <laughs> I volunteered for, Well, you know, it's good. Awesome. works out. Heavyweights, you just got to understand how to wrestle them, right? You got to play to your strengths, not to their strengths. If I want power and power, I lose 100% of the time, right? I'm not going to do that. Um, so yeah, I get to wrestle man. But you know, Max, I think what how we both feel about it is like, you know, neither of us, I mean, I wanted to wrestle Midlands. Obviously, it didn't work out. I was sad about that. But how I feel about it is that... Um, Every time I wrestle, I can try to impart or pass on some of what I do to other people. So I want to do it with our college guys or our good high school guys so I can pass on those skills, right? Um, so that's part of coaching. I know Max does the same thing. He does a lot of wrestling every week. But it's all with you know guys that we coach that are in college now or guys that are in high school so we can pass on that wisdom and that knowledge. Because, you know, there is this coaching, right? Obviously, a certain part of it is do this, do this, do this. This is why you do that, explaining it, right? But there is a, a significant portion of it that is feel, that is timing, that is understanding where you're at in space, and, you know, there's like, my better guys, uh, Jacob Roska, Peyton Mako, Jared Craddock, the guys that I wrestle with on a regular basis, um, there's stuff that I don't tell them to do, I just start doing it, they're smart, they start doing it, right, it's like imitation, it's, they, you know, they figure out, oh, he's doing this to me, man, that's a pretty good move, maybe I'll do that, so, yeah, I think when Max and I wrestle, it's almost, it's almost exclusively with a lot of our younger guys. Okay, like Chael Sonnen, I think you're made for the internet era. I think that you're made for... Internet, yeah. No, I, I'm serious. Sure, okay. I think that, you know, I don't know if you're Green Toe Palacio. He's really made for it, right? <laughs> yeah. But, like, you're, you know, I mean, obviously you can do podcasts and you yeah. can do media the rest sure. of your life. Yeah. And, and commentary and yeah. whatever you want to. Is that something we're going to see more out of you when you retire and um, just coach? I love coaching a lot more. Uh, I really enjoy coaching a lot. But, you know, it doesn't take up my whole day. And, like, the, the Rudis thing is fantastic. I do two podcasts a week with them. I do... Uh, where you tricked me, by the way. <laughs> I do a Mental Monday. Um, I think we're going to try to get into some other really cool avenues that, um, you know, where I can get out there and talk about wrestling. And, you know, the, the biggest thing about me doing that stuff, 
for me, right? Obviously, I can use it as a job, and that's fantastic. But I think I think about wrestling uniquely, and I think some of my ideas, if they can spread, like, like I'll tell you an example, like the 50, 55, 60 that are eight years old and seven years old, it's stupid, right? So well, we have one little brother at 50 pounds, but the other ones are like pickups from other teams. Our 65 pounds, I think he's got a fifth or sixth grade. That's kind of a better age, right? Those young kids, why do we need to drive them around the country and wrestle? It's dumb. It's really dumb, okay? Um, and But people get this idea, and then they say, well, this kid was successful at the time he was first grade, right? But there's there's correlation, but there's not causation. It's not he's the best because he was great in first grade, right? And sometimes I think it's he's the best despite the fact that he was good when he was young and pushed hard when he was young. And so if I can spread ideas like that, I think wrestling is going to be a significantly better place um, in 20 years. Okay. Yeah. Do you not, and not just me. There's other people with great ideas that I think that need to be spread. Can we see you coach in MMA? You know, DC will coach a little MMA, but he's yeah. going to do he's going to do wrestling, right? Yeah. You're, it's your base. Yeah. Um, will we ever see another guy in the next 10 or 15 years dominate with just wrestling skills oh, that you have? Absolutely. You know, I was disappointed that Ed, I thought Ed Ruth was going to be that guy. Um, yeah, he's lost his last fight, which is kind of disappointing. But I think I think more now than ever, there's really good uh, wrestlers going to MMA. I hear Bo Nichols going to give it a try. That might be a rumor, but I'd like that. That'd be sweet, right? Um, so I think there's going to be more and more good guys giving a shot, especially as that scene all the wrestling the income has got better. So guys are sticking, you know, like Kyle Dake and, and uh, David Hill, they're sticking around longer. Um, Jordan Burroughs, right? We can you probably would have. I would have stayed. I never would have fought. Another cycle, probably another quad, right? I never would have fought. I would have wrestled forever. That's yeah. crazy. That blows um, my mind. So, what? Yeah, this is live. This is Quentin. He's a nice kid. He's 105 pounds. And he's looking for the bathroom. <laughs> which I'm sure like, ask that question. Quentin, go find the bathroom. All right, hey. All right, see you. You got, Hold you on. got guys you're coaching. Not you. Let you go. Let you go. He can find the bathroom. He's eighth grade. If he can't find the bathroom himself, he's in trouble in life. Um, what the hell are we talking about? Oh, wrestlers. Good wrestlers. So, yeah. So, with, with these, you know, David Taylor, you guys sticking around. I want to say clogging up the system, right? Good but problem. It's a good problem. But there's, there's going to be younger guys who aren't going to be able to make the team because they're behind Dake and Taylor and Snyder and Cox and these guys, right? So, it's gonna, it is going to clog up the system. So, some of that overflow is going to go to MMA. So, I think we're going to you know, we have Pete Gell, who's 12. Well, He's obviously not the prototype you're talking about. He's Pico's got amazing hands. He's got amazing hands also. You're talking about a wrestler, wrestler. So I think Bo Nickel could do it. Um, Logan Stone is the guy who uses a lot of wrestling. He's he's like 10-0. So athletic. 8-0, 9-0, something like that. Like, that guy's so, athletic, man. But he's, still, he's a great scrambler, good wrestler. So yeah, I, th- I think we're going to see... I think we're going to continue to see a lot of wrestlers go that avenue for a while. All right, you got anything yeah. else for me? No, I might no. grab you again later. Yeah, I want to get you maybe in a bad mood later. We got, I don't get in a bad mood. We're wrestling. Um... Hey, where are you guys? Uh, 1022, so they said we'll be headed by 5 o'clock. I finally, I find that to be highly unlikely. Okay. Um, that I'll grab you after that's your okay. anger. We're in for the We're in for the long haul. Uh, and that's it. Driving or flying? I drew, I flew here. I'm going to drive back from okay. You're yeah, right. I, I had to get my work in, workouts in yesterday, so. All right, hey, thanks right. for the time. Good, Good luck to you guys, all right? Appreciate it.